Hey everyone, good morning, good evening, good night, depending on where and when you're viewing this. I'm happy to bring you another installment in the PhD Chronicles and I kid you not, I've been trying to do this video for almost six months. My last upload was in July of 2020, it's February of 2021. And actually, this one is called, why does a PhD take so long? All right. So let's first talk about time. So I've seen PhD programs that can take as little as a year. Usually those are by published books. And what that means is that the, the researcher has already done a, a pretty decent body of work and really their work is not to put that together. Um, so that can take as little as a year. And I've seen those part-time take as much as six years. Uh, and then of course there are stories where people have taken 10 years to get a PhD done. Because as my supervisor, Dr. Natalie Posadi says, life happens. Um, certainly I'm not going to take that long, but let's talk about length of time and all the pieces that are built in. So I'm at the University of Trinidad and Tobago, as you know, I'm doing a PhD in management psychology and I'm investigating the relationship between behavioral styles and work ethic in the labor force of Trinidad and Tobago. Now at the UTT, University of Trinidad and Tobago, you have a minimum registration period of three years. I had hoped to be done in two but it doesn't look like that is practical and some of the reasons for that you'll get in this uh in this video so i had hoped to be done in two years um they said minimum period three years i said that when i was enrolling and i was sort of given this sort of response like well let's see how it goes and um, i think wisely <laughs> they knew that stuff happened so let's talk about why it takes so long so firstly, as you know, and I've done in a previous video, um, I had two courses, and those were the only two taught courses. There are other courses, but they're not taught courses. And then once you're done with that, you start to do your, your writing, and it depends on your supervisor. Um, you might start, like I have a colleague who is also a candidate at the UTT. He started with the methodology section, interestingly enough. Um, I guess he had a good idea of what he wanted to do and had a good view of the field. I started with the literature review. Now, remember, when you're doing a PhD, you're creating new knowledge. Literally, it has not existed before. No one has done it. And so, in order to do that well, you've got to know what is in the field, right? As uh, Tara Brabazon from Flinders University in Australia says, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And if you stand on the shoulders of giants, you've got to know what those shoulders contain. What's there? What have they done? You've got to read extensively. In my own case, I'm looking at behavioral styles and work ethic within the labor force of Trinidad and Tobago. And that's a big topic, uh, if I could say so myself, because I have to look at both of those constructs, behavioral styles as a, as a branch of personality and work ethic, very different. Uh, let's treat with them separately. So if I'm looking at behavioral styles being a branch of personality, I have to look at personality, the history of it, um, how are they formed, how are personalities and behavioral styles formed. And if you're looking at that, you have to look at two major areas. You've got to look at the genetics, and then of course epigenetics, epi means on top of, and I'm not gonna go into that here. Um, and then you also have to look at the environment. Now I'm looking at behavioral styles and work ethic within the labor force of Trinidad and Tobago. So naturally, I have to look at the peoples of Trinidad and Tobago, the major people groups, how, where did they come from? What were the experiences as they sort of formed, as we formed ourselves into a society uh, over the last, I'd say, a hundred and something years, because I went back um, to pre-colonial times, um, starting with the Amerindians coming forward, uh, because all of that history is part of who we are today and the environment shapes your personality, it shapes your behavioral style. So I had to look at indentureship, I had to look at slavery uh, and how those major people groups were treated because they were the major people groups or are the major people groups, their descendants anyway, that formulate or form the population and indeed the workforce of Trinidad and Tobago. So all of those things had to be looked at and not in sort of minor detail but pretty deep detail and then how did we become a nation? So you had to look at colonialism, we had to now consider and examine uh, independence, the rise of labor, organized labor, labor which was pre-independence. Um, all of those pieces had to be considered and how that now has shaped the people that we are today. Um, so that's just behavioral styles or work ethic. Sorry, behavioral styles, not work ethic. No, let's look at work ethic. Uh, if you're looking at work ethic, you have to look at the origins of work ethic. Oh, let me stop. Back up. 
to behavioral styles and personality. You have to look at the construct of personality itself. Where did it come from? Who formulated it? This goes back to the ancient method Mesopotamians. This is North Africa. So this goes back, this is ancient. You have to look at all of that stuff and come forward to the modern day to have a proper understanding of what exists in that area. Now over to work ethic. If we're looking at work ethic, uh, we've got to look at where the, where the construct comes from. So that's Max Weber uh, and the, the Protestants. And we had to look at what happened in terms of how work ethic became this thing that we look up to in the modern world and we speak to and we point to. Uh, we look at work ethic in the Western world, which seems to be a little bit different to other parts of the world in terms of how we view it. Uh, interestingly, um, I read one paper that said that Muslims have the highest work ethic of all of all religions. And that's not said to be controversial. Um, and I found a connection where it is said uh, in the Quran, I think it was uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says that uh, work of the 45 forms of worship, work is the number one, which was so interesting. So, um, very, very interesting. But you have to, I have to look at all of these factors uh, to understand what lays in there. I have to look at research that has already been done about work ethic in Trinidad and Tobago. There isn't a whole lot, uh, but it ex some exists. So, all of that had to be considered to put together just the literature review, the review of the literature, so that I can now find a gap in the literature that identifies, okay, what is going to be my contribution to this knowledge, to this body of work. And so I did that. Uh, my lit review is about a hundred and about a hundred pages. It's too big. I know I'm going to have to do some editing. Uh, I think I have about 350 references. And I'm saying that only to say that you have to read all of this stuff and understand. It's not all reading their videos in there as well, um, but lots of papers, journal articles, uh, newspaper articles, books or sections of books, uh, lots of videos as well. Uh, all of that to put together this story of work ethic and personality related to the labor force of Trinidad and Tobago. I also had to look at the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, and see what has been written about and what's the state of the economy and, and see their linkages. There are some references made to work ethic as it relates to the economy. So that's that. That's the, the, um, the lit review. And the lit review uh, goes through a series of edits. So I send a first draft to my supervisor. She's going to look at it. She's pretty quick. She comes back to me. I edit again. I send it back. Second draft. We had a couple uh, video calls just to answer some, some questions, answers, clarified some things, and got that to a decent format. And it still needs to be edited, but I have the body that I need in there. So that's only one part. Then we move on to chapter three. Chapter three is the methodology. And I, got, I, got, I did a lot of work um, in the methodology section, um, really just to figure out how am I gonna go and what am I go what's the data I'm looking for? How am I going to measure these constructs? What, what, what are the ways in which I'm going to do that? And then, once I've written that, and that wasn't a big body of work, maybe 30 plus pages. Um, once that was written, uh, that has to now be reviewed. But you need someone who is uh, knowledgeable and experienced in the field of statistics because this is methodology. How are you going to go out into the world and investigate the constructs? Uh, they've, they've got to review that. And I hit a snag because remember, no one is sitting and waiting for you to be done a particular day to mark your paper. It's not that kind of learning. Uh, this is one of those things where you submit it and then somebody's going to now come back and then at some point in time and give feedback. And that took a little bit of time for me to get that feedback. I've gotten that feedback. Now, once I have that, I have to put together a formal proposal to the university that says, this is the introduction, this is sort of the, the lit review summary, and then this is how I'm going to go out into the world and investigate this. This is my methodology. They have to approve that, and that's going to take some time. And once they approve that, only then can I go out into the world and gather data. Once I've gathered the data, I have to clean the data. Uh, I have to um, analyze the data, see what the findings are, discuss those findings, write all of that up. So now I am, I started this in September of 2019. We're in February of 2021. So I am a year and whatever that is, a semester or a year and, and three months in. Um, my projection is that I'll be done by about May or June of 2022. 
so a little bit over a year more to go which would put me just under three years but in school time that's really three years so yeah uh, and, and I'm going pretty quickly from what I've been told um, I don't believe that I thought I could go faster there were times when I sort of looked at the work with a side eye and said uh, not today <laughs> so that happens actually I got some when I got my feedback in November or December you know I said uh, I'll take that up in 2021 and so I've only now taken up the feedback for the methodology section. But this gives you an insight as to why it takes so long. Um, and then if you think about it, and, and I, as I told you, I've been told I'm, I'm pretty disciplined. Uh, I give my own deadlines and I work accordingly, uh, usually when I can. Um, but amid all the other things that are going on, if you think about someone who has a job, as I do, but I do work for myself, I, I do have my own businesses. And I'm able to say, okay, I'm going to devote this day um, to the PhD work, which I never do unless it's a weekend. So my work time is my work time. I do my PhD work early in the mornings uh, when I can, and then um, on the weekends when that is possible. And it hasn't been possible for some time. So it can take a lot of time. I mean, think about putting together 100 pages of lit review material, uh, having to read 300 plus sources. To be able to put that together and you're writing your own words this is not other people's words i mean yes there are quotations in there um but but it's your stuff that you're putting together based on the work of others because we stand on the shoulders of giants and i'm not anywhere near done yet so i hope this is helpful um three years i'm told is really quick uh for a part-time student because although i'm registered as full-time um i'm registered as full-time but i don't do this full time. I have I have other businesses. I have five businesses that I'm involved in in some way, manner, or form in the running, in the operations of, uh, and there are other things that are going on. And then there's just life, and I have to sleep between six to eight hours every night. I tell people that. So when you think of all, all the life stuff and all the school stuff and the reading and just life happening, COVID nineteen hit last year, and that has kind of thrown things into a sort of a topsy turvy. I I didn't do as much work as I thought I would do even though I had more time, but I was very distracted by what was going on, what is going on in the world with that. So yeah, life happens, all this stuff, and in the middle of this, I'm trying to get um, a PhD done, which is no mean feat, I'm told. So moving on, but I found that if you put one step in front of the other and you stay on, stay on the course, you'll get further down the road than most people. So this has been another PhD Chronicles. Hope it has been helpful, and I hope I'm not going to take another six months to come back to you. Take best care, Richard Solomon. See you soon.